G'day, g'day, comrade subscribers. I've been a bit lazy lately. Uh, I just lost interest. But let's carry on. So, is this another ZX Spectrum clone? No, actually, it isn't. Um, but first, before we get to that, this finally arrived. 40 uh, best machine code routines for the ZX Spectrum with explanatory text, 4th edition. So this was a Kickstarter update to the book. So um, it's quite a nice nice feel. One of these kind of books that you can, you know, well-thumbed sort of thing. Um, well, okay. <laughs> it sits open nicely. <laughs> so it just arrived yesterday. And it's uh, it's been updated. It's got a Spectrum Next um, section now as well. So um, yeah, I thought that might be interesting to to have a have a look through. So yeah, so that arrived. You can buy copies now as well. So there we go. But this uh, this fellow here, so this is actually a Sinclair ZX Spectrum, but it's in one of those um, aftermarket uh, cases with a proper keyboard. So it's just arrived. I haven't cleaned it or anything. It is a bit dusty. Um, not sure if it works. So you can just, I think you can see the original, the, the, the actual spectrum inside there. Um, so anyway, we'll have a, we'll have a proper look. We'll have a close up at the keyboard first, shall we? So here we go. So like I said, it's just arrived. Um, so needs a clean. But um, got a nice feel to it. So there we go. So yeah, I'm not sure. It, I don't see any any marking on it. Um, I think it did come with micro drives. I think the seller uh, is selling them separately. But uh, I couldn't. I couldn't. Um, stretch to pay for them at the same time so i think you might still have them for sale but of course obviously if i bought them i'm going to pay the um ebay global shipping costs again but um yeah so interesting i'm really interested to see what what's inside you see um well yeah we need to kind of sort that out but it looks like we've got a reset reset switch here Looks like we've got microphone, uh, you know, cassette there. Is this composite or is this UHF? I don't know. Um, a bit loose. Reset button. Joystick port. So, interesting. So I got one of these because I don't actually have a genuine Sinclair Spectrum. I've got so many clones and I've got a... Uh, Timex Sinclair. I've got a TS2068 from the US, but I don't actually have a, spe uh, a Spectrum um, itself. So I thought rather than just get a boring old Spectrum, I thought maybe get something a little different that might make a slightly interesting video. Anyway, let's, uh, let's have a proper look at it. So, as I said, with keyboard, micro drive interface there on the side. So on the back here, it looks, I assume we've got cassette, uh, so I'm not sure, this is obviously video out, but I don't know whether it's composite, um, composite or UHF, whether it's baseband or not. I guess we've got a, a repeat of the cassette interface there, joystick interface as well, expansion, a hole for something, don't know what, <laughs> and... Um, in the power cable there so I'm, I'm guessing maybe this is kind of stretched out maybe that was originally in there otherwise there is no markers indication on it so I assume I assume it's these four screws there and then these two are holding the spectrum in place I assume let's open it up hey okay, screws are undone Okay, this feels quite light, so I'm not sure what actually pulls off. Okay, that pulls off as well. Um, okay, nice no, note. We've got a bit spare spectrum, that's why. Here we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. 
Okay, so it is UHF out, unless it's been modified. Okay, keyboard, nice. Just, um, what's the best way of doing this? What's that? That goes down. Oh, okay, that's power. Okay, that's the power there. All right, so just connect that. So power comes in. We've got a transformer. Okay. <laughs> that was held down by some double-sided tape, perhaps. Um, how is that held in place, then? Jesus, look at that. So that... Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. That's not how I would have done it. All right, so that's the power cable that goes to the keyboard, and then from the keyboard, we've got a cable that goes to the spectrum. Okay. Now we've got... Okay, so it looks like we've got UHF out, so we'll have to do a mod, I guess, unless it's already been modded. I assume it hasn't. Okay, micro drive cable. Oh, very cool. Oh, so it's actually a ZX interface one. Oh, wow. Okay. Cool. I've never had one of those before. All right. And this is broken off. Bit of plastic there that's broken off. I guess maybe that went there. Okay, cassette. Oh, God. I will definitely be fixing those up. And... Okay, we've got a reset button. Reset button is hardwired in, unfortunately, so we'll fix that up. Um, all right, let me... Very thin wires... Can I turn this over like that? There we go. Zoom in a bit, maybe. Right, so... Keyboard cabling looks nice. Nice and... Um, yeah, it looks... Uh, durable. Okay, got those off. So now the reset, let me just, reset is blue and red, okay. So I might just take a photo of that and desolder it. Okay, the, so it's an issue two board. So I have disconnected the reset cable. So I say this is my first real spec, well I've, I've had one before but I've, um, I got it by mistake. A charity in the UK. Uh, charity in the UK. Yeah, sold it. What was I supposed to get? Oh, I was bidding on. It was on eBay. And what did oh, I can't remember? I think they ended up. I think it was probably a ZX81. And they sent me a Spectrum Plus instead. It was supposed to go to the guy in the UK. And obviously, once you take into account um, postage and all that sort of stuff. There's no point sending it back to the charity because they had to, you know, well, okay, well, they had to reimburse me. It wasn't cheap. <laughs> I didn't have much money. So, but what I said to him instead is, look, I know someone in Australia who would love it. So what I can do is I can sell it to him and then I can send you the proceeds. And um, I think I ended up sending them um, like 150 pounds or something. So they were, they were over the moon. I said, look, don't worry about it. Um, so I think they refunded me the purchase price. So they refunded me the whatever I paid for the ZX81. And um, yeah, and then I sold the Spectrum Plus that they sent to me. It had the cassettes and everything. Um, and um, yeah, so, I sent, so they actually ended up getting more for it than they would have <laughs> originally. But anyway, so yeah, this is my first. So I think on, this, on the Spectrum Plus, I, it was a pretty simple mod. I think it was just an electrolytic. I think that just kind of hung out here to do um, to do baseband composite. So I'll probably have a look at that. Obviously, replace the regulator as well. 
Um, I do have a book on the ULA, on the Spectrum ULA, that describes all the different um, patches and bodges. So I might have a look at that. Anyway, so there's that there. So obviously I'm not just going to put this back together because this is this is horrible. This is disgusting. Um, certainly electrical tape. So I'll certainly fix all these up. Obviously these need to be... So you don't even need that there. So what I would have done is I would have... Um, just had a bit of glued heat shrink, but obviously back in the 80s things were different. So I'll fix those up. So I'll probably pull all this apart, give it a good clean, because I need to I need to give the keyboard a good clean as well. Um, yeah, Sync ZX interface one. That's pretty cool. So that's why we've got the joystick interface. That's pretty neat. Micro micro drive interface there obviously as well. So that's um that's a bonus. Uh, very, very simple power supply here, obviously. We've just got a uh, transformer, some diodes to do rectification. Oh. <laughs> Whoops, you can't see that. So it's obviously had a bit of a hard life, a bit of a big crack there in the board. Uh, so I would probably in this to be honest because uh, we need nine volts in don't we it's expecting nine volts in yeah it's expecting yeah, it's expecting nine volts in so I would just probably replace this with um, plug in nine volts yeah I'm just trying to because I don't think I've got anything that would really fit I've got toroids that might fit in that corner so nine volt toroid but you still need to do the rectification and everything. So I might just bin that and put nine volts in. Okay, take that out. Let's, um, let's have a look at the keyboard. I'm tempted just to hose this thing off and because that's that's kind of come off as well. Mm. All right, let's see if we. Uh, how does the cube? Oh, okay. So we've got we've got three screws. We're missing a screw. Okay, let's remove the keyboard. Very, 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 very short screws. Okay. Okay, keyboard's out. I guess there's no springs, but it is soldered to this. Um, is What's this? Another bit of plastic that's broken off the interface one or something. Kind of wedged in there. I'll sort it out later. Um, so is it safe to... Oh yeah, screws, they come off pretty... I guess I should take them all off. Oh, they come off pretty easily. Alright, I'll take a photo of that. Take them all off and give the keyboard a good scrub. Okay. So the keyboard needs nine volts, does it? Hmm, okay. Now for the case. Um, unfortunately, I think this is probably a little bit beyond. I don't know. This is on there pretty good. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, I would just probably redo. Oh, okay, these are just cut out. Cut out from a magazine. And then sticky taped on. So, all right, I oh, will redo those. We'll have a look what's available on the uh, in the Spectrum community. But, yeah. Um, all right. I'll give this a, I'll remove those, give this a good clean as well. So that'll come up quite nice, get rid of all the dust. And um, same on here, same on the base plate. Just remove this, um, redo this bit nicer. Yep, do the keyboard. 
and um, do the composite mod and then uh, see if it works I guess. I think I've got everything just about ready. I've just noticed that here's the those two additional screws. Um, <laughs> what were they attached to? So looks like they were just kind of positioning for the ZX for the um, interface one because they're not long enough to come through. So it looks like they're just positioning there. Although having said that, where was that other, where was that broken bit of plastic? I don't know what that's for. Oh, that was kind of, I think, something like, like an off, oh okay, I think maybe it was something like that offset for the spectrum board perhaps. Interesting, interesting way of doing that. So... That would mean that this thing here is also kind of a offset, perhaps. Here we go. So I don't know if that's supposed to sit in there like that, perhaps. Maybe as well. Dunno. Let's not worry about that now. So going to give this a very very good scrub pull the keyboard apart clean it as best I can and then um, look at the specy itself so whilst the case is drying and the keyboard is drying I um, so this is the book I was talking about spectrum ULA and that seems to be a bit of broken plastic Maybe off this standoff, maybe? I'm not sure. Put that aside. But uh, yeah, the Spectrum uh, ULA. Oh. I should actually use, I uh, refer to this a bit more when I'm doing troubleshooting, <laughs> if that's what you can call it, <laughs> on all those um, Soviet, post Soviet Spectrums. This is a really good, um, really interesting book on um, well the spectrum ULA what it does where do we go so just explaining all the bits spectrum and the ULA ZX spectrum overview uh, the memory map video display internal clocks video sync generating the display video memory access uh, video control clocks video addressing analog video CPU memory Input output devices, cassette storage. So it's quite, it's quite, it's a really, really well done book. Excellently. It's got a lot of information. For example, I would say, like, if you had some issue with memory addressing or something like that, it tells you what, how the ULA works. And um, you can see the, uh, the logic equations here. So, on on the um, on the spectrum itself, for example, you you can buy a um, you know you can get the replacement ULAs from uh, Charlie at uh, V Retro, so the VLA eighty two for example, and you can also get I think it's the VLA you can also get a replacement. There's a, v, a ULA in here, so you can get a replacement for this one as well. So we can do that for the genuine spectrum, but I think for the for all those clones, you can't really, because they're all their own designs really. Uh, some use the Soviet ULA, some have got completely discrete logic. Uh, they don't use the U a ULA at all. So you can't really just replace the ULA if it's not working. So this sort of book here, explaining how everything's generated, I, I really should refer to this more. Um, so anyway, yeah. So it does, like I said, I thought it actually listed the different bo um, issue boards and what changes were made on them. But I, because I, I did read through this book a, a long time ago, I couldn't find it quickly looking. But it does dis, it does dis, uh, detail the ULA versions? Did I actually mark that somewhere? 
Let me just check. So, ULA versions at the end. And we've also got this hidden hidden features and errors. Implementation des design errors. So maybe that's where the different uh, board revisions are listed, maybe. I'm not sure. 239. Design disabled 16K. Dark flash edges. Oh, okay, here, so the logic was not fixed in subsequent, for example, uh, this, whatever this is here. Disabled 16K DRAM refresh. The logic was not fixed in subsequent versions of the ULA and the refresh connection to RAS via R32 was removed from the issue to spectrum and above. So I think maybe that is what I was referring to. Anyway, so 249, what version of the ULA do we have? Let's have a look. So it's a 6000 series. Zoom in. Put my glasses on. Six, or is it a 5000? No, it's a 6000. 6C001. Okay, 6C001. Issue 2, so it's issue 3, 61E6. All right, so it's an issue 3 ULA. Okay, so issue 4 contains modification, improves the reliability of the CPU's access. So, yeah, so it's all quite interesting. It tells you the, the differences in the ULAs. So, actually, it's pretty... Yeah, so this is one the issue two spider modification was still required, became an integral component. Because I thought that was there was supposed to be a um, transistor on here. But it's not there. Anyway. Yeah, so that's a that's um interesting book. I should refer to it more often. And about that Spectrum Plus that I got sent. So I think the story is they ended up getting the... Because it, it was the Spectrum Plus was supposed to go to a guy in the UK and I was supposed to get a, a ZX81. So they got the ZX81 back from the guy in the UK and sent it to me. And they told me to keep, just sort of keep the Spectrum Plus. It's not worth sending it back, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I, I knew a guy who would be quite interested in it because Spectrum Pluses are, well, rare in Australia. Not so many. This is a few years ago. Uh, so, so I sold it to him uh, for a pretty good price, better than what the charity originally sold it to the guy in the UK for. And um, because they were a charity as well, they were um, exempt from fees on PayPal. So I was able to send them the full amount. Um, and they didn't lose any. So they actually made money on it. So And they sent me, yeah, Chichester. Harbour Channel, so they sent me this nice thank you, thank you card. Dear Brett, thank you so much for taking the time uh, to help us sort out a mistake. Um, as you know, we are a local charity and these difficult times, every penny counts. Action like yours give us extra energy and motivation to carry on with our fundraising efforts. Kind regards, Daniel. St. Wilfred's Hospice, uh, Chichester. So that was pretty nice of them to, um, to send that on. But um, yeah, it, it worked out really, really well. Um, they uh, they got a good price for that. Anyway, so what can we do on here? So I was having a look at Mr. Tynemouth's uh, blog. He's done a um, interesting. Well, they're all interesting. Uh, right up on fixing an issue too. So I'll replace the regulator. He's gone through and actually replaced, I think, the one microfarads as well. Yeah, they're all one microfarad, 50 volts. So replace those as well. Um, composite mod in here. When he did, he said he did the 100 microfarad electrolytic and the, the output wasn't very good. So he did the, um, the um, common emitter uh, buffer uh, mod in there that you do on like the ZX81. I actually should have some boards I can use directly. So, 
And I think I'll do that first just to see if we get some sort of image image out of it before I go and replace that. Pretty simple. I think, is this one got audio? I think this one's got audio pass through as well, which is that one there, just straight pass through. So pretty much five volts ground and the um, video signal input. And then whichever way around it is, and then you've got the output on there. So as of, well, as you probably know, what I like to do is completely gut the can. So basically desolder this fellow, which is pretty simple. Desolder him. And um, just mount that in there probably. And then we use that RCA there. Okay. Let's uh, let me get started. Uh, so getting there, just wedging, wedging the knife under. Okay, I think that one's out. Right, let's continue. Um, almost got off. I've changed my mind about using using the um, uh, meter follower. The very simplest composite mod, uh, I think, is um, well, basically just connect this um, this signal here straight up to the RCA connector. Or um, use 100 microfarad electrolytic because there can be DC apparently on the video signal. So use an electrolytic to get rid of the DC and connect it up that way. The reason for that is that I've, I've ordered a VLA82 replacement from Charlie at V Retro um, and he has the option of a uh, mini DIN. Um, that replaces this mini DIN board with RGB out. So I don't want to go and use one of these and do all that if I'm going to replace this anyway. So I'm just going to do a very simple mod just to see if it works. So I'll continue getting the board off. This is heated up enough now. Yeah, a little bit more. There we go. That side's out. Okay. Need three arms here, three hands. Probably should have just desoldered the uh, the wires as well, but it doesn't really matter. We're not using those wires. Out you come. Out you come. Come on. Probably just chop them off actually. Might be the easiest thing to do. If I had, where is it? Just chop them off. Okay, those are disconnected. It's just, there we go. Right, so, got this. So we can use it temporarily, just for the RCA connector. Uh, might be easier even which way is negative might be easier even doing it just like this actually somehow or maybe not using an axial I might use a radial um, yeah radial actually Let me replace this okay bit of effort do not ask what I did to my thumb I am not in the mood anyway so almost all out. So I got the <laughs> yeah, got all that out. So this is the base. It goes on in under there like that. Blah blah blah. So I'll just tidy this up a bit more. And then positive goes out there. Maybe stick it something like something 
like that maybe or maybe I'll go back to the axial now that I've got everything out it might be easier so just quick and dirty so I'll solder that in solder back that in that goes back into there and um, then we can see if it works okay just about ready put that back in there uh, it goes on that way okay box is a little bent I wonder how that happened <laughs> well the can is a little bent sorry I wonder how that happened so I'll just need to straighten it out a bit get back together there we go there we go so that'll go back in on there and then yeah I just need to get that through get that through there so I'll get that done let's see there we go that's the end result ready to go so now I just need to find a um, well not, it's uh, probably nine volts so because i've is it daniel or darren i can't remember uh time mouth uh time mouth software daniel or darren uh, apologies um i was reading one of his repair things and he also said i think tr4 and 5 on the power circuit also normally fail but i don't think i've got replacements for those so let's see let's see so nine volts no doubt center Probably center negative. Um, in which case, I can probably just reuse this that I use for my GBSA two hundred. Just need to swap the swap the power around. All right, let me just double check if it's center negative. Okay, mm -hmm. let's power on. Hey, it's working. <laughs> Let's have a problem. Okay. Doesn't look too bad. I can see some kind of jail bars. But um, considering my very hack job of a composite mod, it looks okay. Um, I have a keyboard at the moment. Um, can I use a ZX81 keyboard? No, it's too spaced apart. Uh, oh, TS1500 keyboard. Yeah. This um, very well. I, I know it doesn't look nice, but it's um, a post Soviet keyboard. It's a, I don't know if it's Hall effect or something, but um, slightly different. Slightly different input, but I could probably wire it up. Um, maybe, but anyway, let's um, try the TS1500. So, this one looks okay. I think that one's broken, so let's give that a try. Let's give this another try, power on. 550, 560 milliamps. There we go. So, working nicely, it seems. Um, 10 print. Uh, where is it on here? No, uh, delete. There we go. Do, 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 delete. No, that I gotta do symbol, symbol. Uh, <laughs> Oh, I don't know how to do it on here. No, that's lowercase p. <laughs> so I'm effectively trying to use um, a ZX81 keyboard, which is what this is, um, on a Spectrum. So I can't, I'm not going to figure it out. Anyway, it's working. So that's good. So we can do some further, further improvements to it. Uh, I'm not going to worry too much about the video because, like I said, I've got um, Charlie's, I've ordered Charlie's VLA 82 replacement 
Oh, I know what we can do. We can use the uh, thermal camera to have a look at the heat. And I'll replace the 7805. And then, yeah, maybe we'll pull apart the, um, the, the Interface 1. Okay, exciting times. Let me just uh, power off. So, as it is, it's 550 milliamps. I think we're probably saving a little bit here as well. So probably maybe, I don't know, 570. But yeah, so at 550 milliamps is the starting starting power draw. Let me just power it off so I can gently remove... That one's come out. <laughs> there we go. Right. Let's power her back on. Of course, we need the keyboard connected to actually do anything, but... Okay, let's have a, let's have a squiz... I'll do it like that. I'm thinking I might put the. I'm just trying to think of where I'm going to um, do the picture in picture for the thermal camera. Okay. So let me start recording. Uh, store photo. No. No. I want to do video. Record video. Okay, I've got to hold it down. So what have we got some heat? So got some heat on that chip there. Of course the the DRAM. Got the ULA there. What's that? That's already hit hitting 60 something, 70 degrees. Move over to the Z80. About 47 degrees. We've got some more RAM down here. <laughs> and then we've got the the regulator glowing hot. <laughs> and then we've got the power supply there as well. So that's our starting point. Now it hasn't been running for very long. It's only been running for a couple of minutes. That's that's the that's the heat that we're starting with. So definitely the ULA. Um, yeah, pull that one out because it seems to be working. So I'll pull it out and um, let me just whoop, stop recording. Okay, turn that off. Uh, yeah, so I want to obviously keep that one as a spare. Um, but yeah, so next thing will be replacing that. It doesn't, it doesn't feel hot, but we've got this big heat sink here that we'll basically no longer need. That screw was a bit, a bit rusted. That was a bit hard to get out. Still is a bit hard to get out. I need to push it through or something. There we go. Okay. Get rid of the rid of the regulator. I think I forgot to do the close up of the board that I normally do. So I'm just waiting for the uh, desoldering iron to heat up. So I've got I've got the regulator out. I just need to suck the solder out of the holes. But um, here we go. So we've got issue two board. I didn't hear anything coming out of the speaker when I was pressing the keys, but I wasn't really listening that closely. So I think this transistor here is maybe that transistor mod that sits on top of the Z80. They've maybe just done it that way, perhaps, by the looks of it. Uh, what else? So maybe replace these one microfarads. Um, so maybe these transistors fail. I don't know. It seems to be working okay at the moment. Um, ba -ba -ba. I guess that's the ROM. There's the Z80. There's the ULA. 
two crystals, I guess one for clock and one for um, video output or the um, you know, PAL, I guess. Um, well, that's an interesting little bodge. It's pretty cool. Uh, so there we've got, I guess that's the, so we've got, so it's a 48k machine, I guess. So that's the 16k, is it? Is it lower 16 or up? I don't know how it works. And this would be the other 32k doing the infamous, although are these actually 32? I'm not sure. Anyway. So there we go. That's what this board looks like in particular. So I'm not an expert on, on I'm not familiar with actual spectrum boards. Um, there we go, issue two. Right, let's get that regulator in. Okay, there we go. I think that'll be it for today on this fellow. So I've got I've ordered the um, the replacement VLA from uh, Charlie New Zealand. So hopefully it won't be this week. Hopefully it arrives next week. Uh, assuming he's got got stock. Hopefully it should arrive next week from New Zealand. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the um, ZX Interface 1. So I've never had one of these before. So obviously, what it, obviously, <laughs> so what it gives you is a microdrive interface with the cable. Microdrive interface, joystick interface, and um, pass-through, I guess. I guess that was the uh, the extent of it. Maybe I don't really know. So let's unscrew it and have a look. Actually, I need better double check. I don't need to help the wifey prepare dinner. Okay, dinner is prepared. <laughs> it's uh, chili con carne with uh, spaghetti. So we do um, yeah spaghetti pasta. And chili con carne, which is, um, well, our version of chili con carne, which is a variation of my parents' chili con carne. <laughs> um, but ours is a lot spicier. I never liked it when I was growing up. But anyway, so yeah, it's, it's kind of like spaghetti, bolognese, mince. Well, you know, chili con carne is chili con carne, but yeah, anyway, whatever. So, so yeah, Xenix Interface 1. Yeah, it's the first time I've had one of these. Um... So it's got a ULA in it as well, which uh, Charlie at V-Retro does a replacement for. So I've, I've th added one of those to, to the order as well, um, just in case, but um, well, you know, it's always good to well, you know, mod modernise it. And, um, just wondering whether I should see about going back and getting those the, the micro drives if the guy still has them that that went with this so yeah there's actually a pair a pair of micro drives but um, Charlie does sell micro drive replacements so I might get just get one of those to use with this maybe all right so that's the back of it. So I go go give this a clean. So that's screwed into there. So maybe unscrew these ones then. So reading Charlie's instructions, so he says that there's not enough space in here. Oh, actually, he says um, you can tell a failed ULA in one of these because the um, I guess it shorts or something and generates a lot of heat so you get some sort of bubbling I think or bubbling on here so I'm hoping I'm assuming that this one's okay and no it still doesn't want to come out so I'm gonna have to undo those screws there um, yeah so oh, what are these connected to um, all right no they are it is unscrewing I just got to hold it. Um, as for all my other projects, the Thompson T07, um, and I need to finish off trying to dump that um, 
dump the uh, Santaka thing. I was just losing, losing patience. Okay, so. That kind of slides out, I assume. Nothing else comes off, no. So that must... just fit in there does it or does it pull down pull down and lever out that's very frustrating all right let me fiddle I think I've almost got it so that's going down so it's just there we go there we go Right, oh, okay. <laughs> cool. So that's, is this the ULA there? I assume it is. Issue four. What else we got? I guess nothing too exciting, I guess. So. Microdrive interface, joystick, or well, Sinclair joystick interface. We've got our um, cassette interface. And we've got our um, normal ZX interface there. All right, that's it. That's what it looks like. So I'm not sure exactly what's going on with this transistor there. Okay, <laughs> another bodge, another bodge there. Okay, there we go. I think that's enough for tonight. Um, I said I'll get started on this. Um, just trying to think, maybe the case and everything will be ready tomorrow so I can put it all back together. Or should I not worry about it until I've got the replacement ULAs so I can put those on all in one go without having to pull it apart again. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, hopefully that was of some interest. Um, I still have no idea where that keyboard, I did a search, I did find a page that did have several aftermarket uh, Spectrum keyboards on it from back in the 80s, and I couldn't see it on there. It's, it's not DKtronics. DKtronics, well, DKtronics ones I've seen have got an additional number, uh, number pad on the side. So yeah, interesting, I'm not sure. Maybe it's a homebrew, maybe it's a homebrew keyboard, um, and you put stickers on for the labels uh, for the keycaps. Anyway, rambling now. That's it. Um, hopefully that was of some interest, and um, I'll get back to the usual frequency of videos, maybe tomorrow. Okay, bye for now.